everybody has a testimony and everybody has been through something like you said something mm-hmm. traumatic in their life mm-hmm. has happened and they just choose like you said don't want to speak about it mm-hmm. or anything like that but how can you have that I don't even know what to call it, but that fire in your spirit that helps you, like, it, it gives you that adrenaline to be able to even release, like you said, and talk about it. Yeah. It's so important because somebody else's testimony is waiting for you. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Tiana, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me on today. Yes, I'm super duper (laughs) excited. I'm so glad that you're here. So I'd like to start off every episode with just talking about how I have come to know the beautiful young person that I am having a conversation with. And actually, the way that I ran across you is from a friend. A friend. Yes, a friend sent me. Um, a link to your podcast, Purposely Bossing Up, and was like, you have to check her out because she would be a perfect guest on your show. And I was just like, (laughs) okay, cool. Let me check it out. And she was right because as soon as the music started coming on, I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, I love it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I started listening to you you know, your, your podcast. And I absolutely possibly love your mess, your message, because our message is so aligned on so many different levels. And I was like, yes, I'm definitely going to ask her to be on my, be on my podcast. So thank you so much. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. That's dope. That's dope. (laughs) Yeah. So one of the things that we have in common is that you say that you love to use your life experiences to power other people, um, to just stay, to stay strong and just to push through whatever it is that, yes. they're going, that they're going through. And that's something that I love to do as well, because I'm all about sharing my story of how mm-hmm. I transitioned from victim to survivor of sexual abuse. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. And so I just want to know, like, what are one of the life experiences that you always share that helps to motivate and empower people? Um, it's so many, um, but I actually love to make reference to, um, being the only child, Mm. which was, when, which still is, because I definitely still have, is a process. Like, people think it's easy being the only child, and it really isn't. It's super hard. It's really hard. You know, you don't have nobody to, you know, if something happened, you know you did it, but you don't have nobody else to blame it on. Like, I can't do that. So learning how to do things by yourself really um, creates the experiences almost that you have as an adult because you're so used to not needing anyone. Um, you have to learn how to need people. And I think that's one of the biggest um, challenges that I have, whether it's in my business, it's in my personal life, in my relationships. I'm not one to ask for a lot. So I'm always saying if I don't ask for a lot, I should get a lot. (laughs) But, you know, sometimes that's not even the issue. But, yeah, it's hard. It really is hard. I mean, it probably really is something like the only child syndrome, but... It's super hard. So for all the only childs out there, um, embrace that journey. Um, but also learn that you can't do everything by yourself. You mm-hmm. definitely have to um, not lean on other people, but, you know, you utilize your resources. You know, those things are out there. Um, nothing that you do involves just one person. Yeah, I, I 
I completely agree. You know, I say all the time that, you know, just like you can't build a business by yourself, you cannot live in a vacuum either. We need people. Right. As human beings, we were, you know, created to 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 bond and have relationship with other people. You know, I have right. a couple of best friends who are only children. And so mm-hmm. I can I can see how hard it can be. You know, I have like 13 sisters and brothers. So I, I come from a big fa- a big family. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And my dad had, I think, maybe 15 brothers and sisters too. 15, what? 17 wow. brothers and sisters. So yeah, so I come from a I come from a big family and I'm the oldest, you know. And so just because you have sisters and brothers doesn't mean that, you know, they're responsible and they're gonna step up to the plate and help you take Absolutely. care of business and stuff like that. So that's not a guarantee, but with my best friends, I see them. I see how hard it can be. You know, they're the only child. You know, their parents are getting up in age, so they're the ones yeah. that's doing everything. They don't necessarily have that help, like you say. You know, right? And um, and you're right. That only child syndrome can also go in the opposite direction because I also have right. come across people who are only children and they're just clingy and needy. <laughs> Cause wow. yeah because they're not used to really having anybody around so it's like once they you know establish you as a friend they just grab onto you and so right <laughs> <laughs> they don't they don't want to let go and it's just like you know can i can i breathe right can i breathe a little bit so yeah it could definitely bit. go it could definitely go uh both ways both ways mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know please let me know if this, you know, is a sensitive topic for you, but you also Mm -hmm. lost your mom at a very young age too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you mind talking to us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I lost my mom at the tender age of 23 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, of course I would have never thought that I would be the one sitting in those shoes. Um, I, when I was that age, I had, even in high school, I had friends, you know, might have had lost their parents or, you know, and I'm all like, wow, you know, like, that's crazy. I don't know what I would do without my parent and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. And then, boom, it happens to me. And I'm like, whoa, I guess I'm one of these people now. You know what I mean? Um, that was a super duper duper hard time even get to know myself at the age of raising a single parent home all right so um i lost my mom at the age of 23 years old and her death was sudden um it definitely wasn't something that was expected or anything like that my mom was never someone that had you know any ailing illnesses or anything mm-hmm. like that um it was just like crazy in 2000 and um nine she had in august of 2009 she had a stroke a small stroke and you know she went to rehab she came home and when she came home after rehab she had she was like sick like a fever or anything like that so you know us people we take a little you know medicine like all right this fever will break or whatever and you mm-hmm, think it's all right mm-hmm, but her mm-hmm. fever never broke so mm-hmm. i'm all like oh wow like this is crazy so i said i'm gonna call 911 and see what's going on so little did i know that was going to be the last time she would ever be in the house that i'm literally sitting in right now so um she went to the hospital and what they said was that she had pneumonia so she had a bad case of pneumonia and then from there she already had um like iron level issues but then she um she had low platelets so like Red Cross came in and had to do like blood transfusions and mm. all kinds of stuff. And then within maybe, I'll say maybe two weeks, they had to put her in intensive care. So when she went into intensive care, it was kind of like, I don't know why they're doing this. Like, and they were saying that it would be better for her to go into intensive care because she can get 24 hour service. So, you know, they can like, you know, watch over her and everything like that. So at that time, that was kind of like what was in my head. So mm-hmm. when they were transporting her, um, we were all sitting in like the hallway. It was me and one of her best friends. And I was just looking at her. I'm like, mom, you don't like this, do you? And she like shook her head like, no, I don't. I don't like it. So um, she went into intensive care and she was in there for about two weeks. And October the 13th, she had passed away in 2009. So mm-hmm. that was like a very, um, it was a hard time. 
it was definitely a hard time. Um, my family is small on my mom's side of the family. Like my mom has mm-hmm. two other siblings. And of course, like I don't have any siblings. And then my grandmother, she was the only child. And then my great grandmother who was still alive. Um, she is the last out of 10 siblings left. Mm. So that's it for like our cluster of family. So it was a really hard time. I was a semester away from graduating with my master's degree. I wanted to like not go back to school, but mm-hmm. all my classmates, my instructors, my advisors, like get your act together. Cause you know, your mom would have not had that. Like, literally, when I used to go see my mom after class, she'd be like, why are you here? Why are you not in class? Like, she was really big on education. She always spoke highly of me to all her friends. You know, mm-hmm. anybody she connected with, you know, like, that's my baby girl. Like, she doing this, she doing that. So I was able to finish my master's degree on time. So I had graduated in 2010. But even now, it's still hard. Of course, it's not as hard as it was mm-hmm. when it initially happened. But the the death of a parent is so rough to get through um because even as a child my mom used to work for temple university um she was a case manager in their mental health department and Mm. was she you know she took care of mental health patients and all that stuff but in 91 she got injured on a job so one of her clients took her arm and like twisted it and it gave her permanent nerve damage oh, on the wow. whole right side of her body. Oh wow. So she had to learn, you know, like how to write again, how to, you know, hold utensils, how to hold pens and mm. all the other stuff. So I kind of grew up fast, you know, being a yeah. caretaker yeah. at eight years old yeah. and five years old was hard. It was yeah. hard. So of course when my mom passed, I question God a lot. Like, why did you do that? Like, why would you take her away from me? Like, you know, this was my home girl. Like, this was this is who I've been with, rocking with forever. And of course, that's not how we want things. Like, my mom never even saw 50. My mom died at 48 years old. So it was like really trying and it's still a journey. But even I'll say maybe a year or two after it happened, I said, well, you know what, God, I've come to it. Thank you. And people were saying, like, why would you tell God thank you? And I'm like, well, just thank you for relieving that off of me. Because if my mom would have made it, I probably would be still taking care of her till this day. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I thank God for relieving that pressure and that stress off of me because I was the only one doing it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I give God all the praise for that and still helping me get through this whole journey without having a parent so to all those who've lost parents you can make it through you know no matter how old you are whether you're young or whether you're old it's still hope and in his light of course at the end of the tunnel wow thank you so much for for sharing that and being so honest and so transparent because that was real that was real talk because you know that's a that's a traumatic experience because Mm -hmm. like i said before i share my journey of transition from victim to survivor of sexual abuse i was sexually abused by my stepfather for eight years and so when i when i share that story with people you know automatically people see that as a traumatic experience right and so i i try to teach people all the time is that if if your story has nothing to do with sexual abuse that doesn't mean you haven't experienced any trauma the death of a parent that's a traumatic experience right and it's it's a traumatic experience that can literally change the course of change the course of our life and have us doubting our faith you know because i went through the same thing you did i doubted you know, I doubted God. Now I didn't grow up in the church, but mm-hmm. I knew enough to know that there was a God. And so right. I would doubt that. Like, why am I going through this? You know? Mm-hmm. And I, I had to go through that period, you know, and it got to a point where I was just like, okay, God, you know, I see that you was just, while I was going through the fire, you was building me up. You was making me stronger. Right. Yeah. You was the resilience and the confidence that I need to do the work that I'm doing today. And, mm-hmm. But, you know, when you're going through that traumatic experience, right, when you're right in the middle of it, you don't see that. You, you sure don't. To hit, you ain't even trying to 
trying to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. You're not, not even at trying all. To hear that. It's, it's not until you have, you know, healed from it, got to a point where you have healed from it and you have embraced your purpose and you walk in your purpose that you can, you know, see, okay, now I understand why I needed to get through X, Y, and Z because it's helping me to, you know, go one, two, three, wherever next yep. steps are, those your next steps are. So I thank you for for sharing that experience and, and giving my audience, my community, another example of what a traumatic experience is and how it can mm -hmm. actually affect you. So, yes. you know, so with the death of your mom, at such a young age, because 23 is, is super young. You don't know who you are at 23 years old. Right. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's really, really traumatic. But do you think that the loss of your mom, that that was a turning point in your life that caused you to embrace your purpose in life yes it was it definitely was um just like you said like certain mm -hmm. events happen in your life to it helps open your eyes to see the things that you're capable of and of mm -hmm. course you don't know what you're capable of until you're put in those positions so mm -hmm. I, I knew that of course being the only child and coming from a single parent home I knew that my mom relied on me for a lot of things, let alone probably everything, okay? Because I can probably still to this day say my mom's social security number. So it's like you use that experience mm -hmm. and say, okay, now it's time for me to look in the mirror. And when I look in the mirror, I don't see other people. And these other people are those that you're taking care of or people that you won't you know, you won't let go of. So now it's time for Tiana to look in the mirror and be by herself. And now let's go through this self-identification journey. Now let's figure out who she is and, and what does she stand for and what other things is she capable of doing. And that still, still took a lot of trial and error. And even at my age now, I'm still trying to figure out who I am, but now I have a better grasp and I can understand certain things and be able to... Um, put those things in position so then that way I can say, you know what, you know, I did this and I did this because I live for purpose and through purpose. So that's how, you know, those things come into fruition. Like every day you're learning something new about yourself, but it took a long time for me to figure out who I was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. I'm telling you, I feel like I'm talking to myself right now because, <laughs> because, you know, my transition from victim to survivor, that took self-awareness. It took mm -hmm. me um, going on a self-awareness journey and I didn't even realize it at the time, you know, because at the time for me, I was able to, I was blessed with somebody giving me therapy, putting me in therapy um, to help okay. me to heal from the sexual abuse. How did you rebound from your mom's from the tra traumatic experience of losing your mom? So I definitely did do, you know, like therapies. Go see a grief counselor because that was so, so important. Like, you know, like you can go to a grandma or, you know, you can go to an uncle or, you know, but it's just not the same. I'd rather go sit down with someone who really doesn't know me personally. So that way I don't feel judged, you know, mm -hmm. um, I also, you know, went to my spiritual advisor. So I did go to the church in that time of me and also kind of connected with other women, no matter the age of those who had lost their mothers, because no one can say, oh, you know, I'm so, you know, you hear that continue word, oh, I'm so sorry, or, you know, um, I, I understand, but you can't understand if you never went through it. So the hurt is different. The hurt is really different, especially the hurt when you lose someone unexpectedly versus someone like my grandmother who passed in 15 who had cancer so it's like it's mm -hmm. the grief is different and the mm -hmm. whole process of grieving is different so yes mm -hmm. I definitely um seek um counseling and therapy um like I said I also reached out to my church family and mm -hmm. I journaled a lot mm -hmm. I journaled a lot at that time I was also angry I was Ooh. Angry. Yeah, yeah I was very yeah. angry um, I partake in a lot of things that I look back today and be like, well, thank God I don't look like what I've been through because, honey, I, I knew I was connecting <laughs> to the wrong things, okay? 
And um, I, listen, you said be transparent, so I'm letting the people know. Listen, <laughs> this is straight no girl. Yes, I can't. I can't make this stuff up. Like when you're angry at the world, you're angry at yourself. You do things mm-hmm. out of spitefulness and you do things that make you feel good when you know they really don't feel good. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, do you regret it? No, because those things made me who I am today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it puts you in a position where you're able to help somebody else out that's in that position because, you know, it's easier to talk to someone that can actually relate to what it is that they're going through, you know, right. at, at the time. Cause like you say, you know, that, that hurt of losing someone the way that you lost your mom, you know, that's a different type of, that's a different type of hurt, you know, right. um, like a, a year ago, I lost my, my brother suddenly. It was actually on October 17th of, wow. of last year. And, you know, he was taken away from us. And through that grieving process, I got angry, you know, um, anger is a part of, it's a part of the grieving process, but mm-hmm. you know, I knew that, and, and this takes self-awareness. It, it, it takes knowing, you know, yourself and, and being in touch with, with yourself and your feelings and things like that. But, you know, I knew I needed to go through that. And so I just put everybody on notice, you know, my wife, I mean, my husband and my best friends, you know, I just put them on notice and it was just like, you know, Hey, I'm, going through this and I need to be able to deal with this. So give me some time, right, you know, right. because the last thing I want to do is lash out at other people because, you know, I, I went from being, you know, sad to angry as hell because mm. my brother has a lot of kids that's, you know, still here wow. who actually needs him, you know? And so yeah. now as a family, we have to pitch in. So, um, yeah, so it was a lot of anger there. So I totally totally get it and even when I was going through my self-awareness journey with healing from a sexual abuse I was very mm-hmm. angry you know because oh, you yeah. mentioned how um, you couldn't like talk to an uncle or a relative right I right. couldn't talk to an uncle or a relative because it was a family secret people knew about it wow or suspected it that it was going on but nobody did anything about it so mm. it wasn't something that I could just go to family and talk about you know and mm-hmm. and I tell people all the time that's probably probably why I'm so open to sharing because it was a secret and it was hidden for so long that when I finally when it finally like came out now it just right. keep coming out i just keep i just keep, <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you <laughs> because yes. you know because once i i finally got it out it was such well got it out to somebody who actually took the time to help me out it was right such a release you know i think I that's believe the it. that's the first part of healing is acknowledging what's going on that's and, right and talking about it like i mm-hmm. feel like those are the first two steps you know, for absolutely for for healing. So, yeah, now you can't you you can't even get me to to shut up about it. You know, because <laughs> I just want no, but I I just want people to know that there is life after sexual abuse. Like you can that's still right. Heal, heal and have you know a loving relationship. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 look in the mirror and actually love yourself and love the person that's looking back at you like that's that right is possible you know mm-hmm. you can um heal from sexual abuse and not hate men right it's, it's possible to do that it's right. possible to do that so you know i i feel as though that it's a part of my purpose to be a walking testimony and just talk about how yeah you know to get to the point where i am today i literally had to stop Mm-hmm. and address the issue I literally had to stop and heal from the sexual abuse and I yeah. think a lot of us we run from the mm-hmm. pain. we yeah. run from it you know instead of instead of embracing it so we can heal from it yeah. do you think that uh, we could turn our pain into purpose yes for sure for sure definitely um and it's it's all about putting in the work though yeah you know everybody has a testimony and everybody has been through something like you said something mm-hmm. traumatic in their life mm-hmm. has happened and they just choose like you said don't want to speak about it mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that but how can you have that uh, I don't even know what to call it but that fire in your spirit that 
helps you like it, it gives you that adrenaline to be able to even release like you said and talk about it yeah. it's so important because somebody else testimony is waiting for you like it's waiting for you like you have to tell your story in order to help somebody else and Mm -hmm. you don't have to know this person you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like so it's like it's super important for people to now speak up and speak out because Mm -hmm. lives need to be in a a point where they're getting ready to transition and they need to be changed for the better and some people just rather sit and mope and and be in that misery, but why be in misery when you can really have real life purpose and be happy about it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you because we're all tied to each other. Like we all have special gifts and talents that we need to, to share with the world so we can pass along the blessings, you know, to, to right. someone else. And we have to, you know, chase purpose relentlessly you know, even if we were to never meet the person that we touch, you know, mm-hmm. especially now in, in the social media age where we have the internet, we have so much access to people. So even if there's no one in your inner circle that you can look to as an example, you can find an example of somebody. Oh, yeah. If if that person is is, is willing, you know, to, to share, but that also right. goes back to, you know, being open, sharing, and being available to people because that's right. You know, I even right now today, as a, as an adult woman, um, just recently I had a speaking engagement, and you know, I, I talked a little bit about the sexual abuse, and women mm-hmm. might come up to me and still share their stories with me and tell me that's right. You know, thank you so much for sharing. I could have never done that, or you know, thank you so much for sharing. Now, you know, I know what healing looks like. Like, yes. what if I never would have stepped on stage? I could have stepped Girl. on stage and talked about anything and not even brought up the sexual abuse, but that That's woman right. would have never got what it is that she needed. That's right. You just never know how you are touching people. You mm-hmm. just never know who's watching you, mm-hmm. you know? Because, yeah, there are some haters and there's some trolls out there, but there's also people out there who are literally watching you and pulling motivation and inspiration from That's right. From you, you yep. know, just you showing up and just being exactly who you are, flaws and all. Yep. But we just have to get really, really, you know, comfortable in in our own skin in order to in order to do that. So That's in, right. in your opinion, what are three keys for authenticity? Like what are three ways that we can literally show up in our as our authentic selves so we can motivate our fellow sisters and brothers um i would definitely say the first one would be own who you are Woo. um you have Woo, to say that again say that again for the people in the background who, own who you are okay yes. own who you are okay <laughs> um you definitely have to own who you are mm-hmm. um you can't like this is it this is the only body you'll be in it'll never be this day this time this hour ever again in life and when you own who you are other doors get to open up Mm. the doors open up stop trying to live your life behind somebody else or trolling behind somebody's shadow when getting upset when you see your friends and your other friends get married and have kids like it's not for you sis or bro like it's not for you so own who you are right like own who you are and embrace the journey Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I say that's another part of um, authenticity. Embrace the journey. Mm. And people always ask me um, if you can go back in time. And I, I say it a lot on Facebook. So, you know, if you can go back in time and change one thing, what would you do? Or would you not change anything at all? And, you know, some people will say, you know, I would change this or I would have done this differently. Or, you know, and I sit back and I think about it too. And I'm like, well, if I could do anything different, I would just bring my mom back. But then I was like, if I bought my mom back, would I be where I am now? Or if I decided not to go to school because we pay so much to go to school. <laughs> we pay so much to go to school. I Girl, that's a, I whole just... nother, that's a whole nother topic. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could just stand on the corner and sell my degrees to somebody. But if I Girl. didn't go to college, would I have met all the amazing people I know now? Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, owning up to who you are, embracing the journey, and 
loving on yourself. Ooh. Like you said, flaws and all. Like flaws I'm not my goal weight, but I definitely love who I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm not the smartest person in the bunch, but I'm not the dumbest neither. So it's like, love who you are. If you got a roll or two, embrace that little bakery you got. You know, if you, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you got 4C hair and your hair can't get straight, listen, embrace it. Love it. Like, love who you are. You just have to love who you are. If you're someone who has a mental disability or you suffer from something, love, still love who you are. And it's okay. You're going to have times when you're not feeling 100%. But Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're you for a reason. And people Mm -hmm. have to understand that. Stop being out here trying to duplicate yourself. And social media has a lot to do with it. Yes. Um, Social media make you thinking you ain't doing nothing, honey. Girl. Like, you ain't doing nothing compared to these people on social media. But people have to understand, and I say this all the time, social media is a world that we as people created. It's not the real world that we live in every day. It's really not. People yeah. make stuff up, they post what they want to post, they say what they want to say, but when you're out here in the real world, it's a different set of cards out here. Mm-hmm. Nobody's living a life that you live. So, like I said, those three things are embracing who you are, loving on yourself, and enjoy the journey. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Those are those are really good, and I hope whoever's listening to this right now, I hope you guys wrote that down. If not, I'm gonna need you to rewind and and write that down. You know, I have asked myself as well, would I have changed anything if I can go back in the past? Would I change anything? And mm-hmm. you know, and, and of course, the first thing that always come to mind, right, is to mm-hmm. take my stepfather out of out of the household. My mom would have never met him. But you know right. what? I grew up in the projects right outside of Chicago. So mm. I'm like, you know, that that whole experience put a, a fire in me to the point where like when I turned 18 I was so ready to leave Chicago that I literally felt as though that if I didn't leave Chicago that I was gonna probably end up dead now that's real wow time. like that's how strong the feeling was for me to leave and and I think that if I probably, if I did not go through that experience of, of the sexual abuse and everything mm-hmm. that came with it, I probably right. would be, I probably be a hood rat right now. I probably wow. wouldn't even be here sitting with, you know, several degrees and, and talking to you, you know? Right. So it's, so I, I toy with that because, you know, going through that experience built me into the woman that I am today. It gave me all the necessary, you know, tools because let me tell you something, going through that and growing up in Chicago, because let me tell you, I didn't see some stuff living in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, uh, so a lot of the things that I have gone through after that, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that it was like a walk in a park, but it was a little easier. I, I know I've been in certain situations where mm-hmm. people was were freaking out, and I'm just sitting there like, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? You okay. know what I'm saying? Because it's like you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I, I've seen some things and I've and I've been through some things. So you know, so no, I wouldn't change that. But I will say, real talk, I will say, if I mm-hmm. could just give myself the knowledge of what I have now mm. to know that mm-hmm. I'm going to be okay because right. in the darkest moments, I was not able to, to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's real. Talk. Right. I believe I you. I was not able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So even if I could just like go back and be able to talk to myself and be like, girl, look at us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at us. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely oh, right. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> Girl, you still got like, some some years left, so just keep going. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. So do you think that um, any of the skills that you have right now that's helping you to walk in your purpose, do you think mm-hmm. that they stem from childhood? Is there anything from your childhood that you're actually using right now today to really uh, walk in your purpose? Yeah. Um, I had... Uh, I was just talking about this on the live a few months ago Uh that um, when I was a kid, I was like a little brat. I was an AB student all the time, you know, always being extra in class and went to magnet schools and all that good stuff. Um, But my mom bought me a computer when I was in the third grade, right? Uh Bought me a computer. 
computer. And she was like, come on, girl, you can do like your projects and stuff. You can type your work up. But I'm like, mom, I'm in the third grade. Like, mm-hmm. what am I doing typing stuff up? So little did I know. Okay, so she went to like Staples and stuff back in the day would buy me like pretty cardstock paper to submit my homework on. Mm, my one plan. Okay, so I'm all like, what in the world? So when I was in the sixth grade, I was like doing like college work. Like in the sixth grade, we were doing like 10 page papers, DC statements, everything. So I'm all like, oh, this is bananas. Like what in the world is going on? So I'm like, when we did projects, I even have a teacher right now, my fifth grade teacher who still has one of my projects from when I was in her class. It was laminated. Like, we had to do this project on Black history, right? Uh-huh. And we had the, um, we had to, like, have conversations with people back in history. So uh-huh. my mom came up with this marvelous concept that we would do, like, these postcards. And that these people from years ago would send me postcards about what they're doing. So, like, Harriet Tubman and Martin Ooh. Luther King and stuff like that. Like, we literally was cutting out paper and drawing stamps and all this other stuff. And then she, like, laminated it and put it all on it. Like, they, she connected them all together. I wish I had it. Connected them all together. It was, like, super extra work I didn't <laughs> want to do. Right? right? So, I'm all like, why, why are we doing all this? Like, this is just doing too much. So now that I'm older, I'm like, well, Tiana, why you keep doing so much? You so extra. Like, it really, like, all these traits, literally, I have now. So Mm -hmm. when I got into, like, my graphic design side, I'm like, this is all the things my mom was teaching me how to do as a kid. So now I can utilize these talents and these gifts to help me in the process of fulfilling my purpose. I love being in that artistic mode, which is a great um, talent to have when you're like an event planner like me. Like I can come up with the most craziest thing, but they make sense. So now I'm like, you know, my mom knew exactly what she was doing when she put that computer in front of me, when she made (laughs) me do those projects that got on my nerves. When mm-hmm. she put me in those magnet schools to prepare me for writing and things of that sort, like mm-hmm. I was ready, like yeah. I was ready, and this literally helped me understand who I am, what I love to do, and how I can help people get where they need to be by the mm-hmm. help of me. So I'm like, I'm still tapping into different talents and gifts, and I tell people all the time, pay attention to all those things your parents made you do as a child because. Mm-hmm. You literally may be able to monetize off of that right now <laughs> as we speak. And people are like, you know, I never even thought about that. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, it's, it's things that really come up every single day that you really try to figure out well, this is something you should do, something mm-hmm. you should not do. You know, you mm-hmm. dibble and dabble in it. And if it don't work, then oh, well, move on to the next one. Absolutely. And, and don't overlook the, the small things that you can do. That's you right. That's like, right. You, you know, it, it, people want to sing like Beyonce or play ball like Dwayne Wade. Like, if that's not your ministry, that's not your ministry. What's that's your ministry? Right. What, is, what is that one thing that you can do? You know, I mean, like, think about it. Caesar came over here and he walks dogs for a living. Now, before, right. C- before Caesar was Caesar Milan. Walking dogs was not sexy. Let's be real. Walking dogs was not sexy. <laughs> but he embraced, but he embraced his talent, you know. That's so right. We we have to embrace, you know, embrace the talents. And it may take a little while, you know? Yep. Um, because like for me, I had to really t- real talk, I had to really like think about like what is that one thing that I would do like growing up because my childhood mm-hmm. was, was such a, a, a traumatic experience, you know, right. And, you know, I, I really had to like sit down and just think about, you know, like who was I outside of, outside right. of and when I sit down and I think about it, you know, I was that kid that could blend in with anybody. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was that one like I can hang out with the cool kids. Or yes. I, can, I can hang out, you know, with with the kids who were like mentally challenged or whatever. It didn't, mm-hmm. it didn't matter mm-hmm. what color you were, you know, I can hang out, you know, and I was just that friend that can talk to anybody. Like I can literally right. talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy how now 
I'm seeing that come into fruition because mm -hmm. like I told you before we got on, uh, before we started recording that my show, Live Her True, started off as a Facebook show. And then people started right. to tell me, oh, you should do, like, you should do a podcast because you are a natural at this. Like right. I've, I've interviewed people and they literally, like after the interview is over, they'll say to me, girl, I wasn't even, wasn't even um, planning on telling you all that. I, I don't know right. what, like I don't know what it is about it about you. That's the truth. But it was just so easy to sit down and talk to you. So I'm I'm learning a whole new talent and skill that I didn't mm -hmm. even realize was a talent and a skill. So mm -hmm. now I'm, now I'm maximizing maximizing it, and like you say, working on monetizing it. Okay. Yes. So, so it's the it's the small things, you know yep. the like me being able to interact with anybody and still be me not interact yep. with other people and then take on their personality but still yep. be Keisha that's in the, the midst of everybody else you know mm -hmm. so that's that's a I think that's a gift so it, it definitely is it definitely is and that's almost kind of like the story was with me behind my pod kids like mm. you'll be like well tiana i think this would be perfect for you because you used to have all the tea back in the day and i'm like you used to have the tea <laughs> what you remember i used to have the tea i'm like i don't remember i don't recall none of this i don't know what you're talking about okay but they were like yo you used to you you should do um you have to do media they was like you will be awesome on the radio and i, I thought about it for a little while and i'm uh -huh. like no nah, i don't want to do this but then something like came over me um, in October of last year, probably a little after mm -hmm. the anniversary of my mom's passing. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to just go ahead and do this podcast. So I had found me um, a girlfriend of mine who I swear is my mentor. She, she still doesn't understand how much she has helped me with this mm -hmm. whole podcast life. Mm -hmm. And I tell her all the time, like, I super duper appreciate you for everything yeah. that you taught me and everything like that. And she's like, bye, girl, you, this is what we supposed to do. And I understand that, but I can tell you this now because some people just leech off you and take information mm. and don't and don't never tell you how appreciative they are of what you may have done for them or may have said to them. So um, when I started that podcast, little did I know that I was going to book every slot for this podcast within the first two months. Girl, stop playing. Not every, every spot in two months. Every spot in two months. I did a call for guests and girl, when I tell you, it, they just started rolling in, rolling <clears> in. <throat> and then I said, this is crazy. So, I, you know, I was picking certain people because you want to make sure that people, like you said in the beginning, that their purpose align with yours. Like you just mm -hmm. can't be inviting whoever on your podcast or whatever you do. You can't work with everybody. I mm -hmm. tell people all the time, it's okay to turn down jobs. It's okay to turn down <sighs> friendships. Whatever you have to do, because you want to protect your spirit, you want to take your mind, you want to protect everything about you. You don't need no mm -hmm. negative energy, no negative mm -hmm. Nancy's, none of those people. So when I was mm -hmm. selecting those people, I was like, all right, cool. Next thing I knew, I was already booked up. I said, whoa. I said, wait a minute, hold up. So I prayed to God and I said, God, I want it to be a time where people reach out to me versus me reaching out to them. Well, look at that. You start praying for stuff. And here it comes. So man, you start praying for stuff, and then you got a girl named Keisha doing a podcast sliding <laughs> into your inbox. <laughs> yes, she was like, "Sis, what's that email?" Okay, so I'm all like, "Oh my gosh!" So now season two was already halfway booked up, mm. and I'm just super excited. I always say your talent is going to lead you elsewhere. So in my head. My talent is going to lead me into Essence and Forbes, and it's also going to lead me on the red carpet. And that's what I'm going to keep telling myself every single day. You have to give yourself um, those affirmations and things to look forward to. It doesn't have to happen right, 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 right now, but it's going to happen if you keep believing it and putting the work that you need to do in order to get there. I 100% agree. It all starts with self because mm -hmm. we show people – um, how to love us. We show people how to treat us. We show, we tell people whether or not they should respect us all about how we view, love and treat ourselves. So right. if you are carrying yourself, like you are corresponding on the red carpet, people are going to look at you as if you mm -hmm. are corresponding on the red carpet, but it starts with you. 
it's, yep. it's, it starts with self. It, it starts from within. And like you said, you know, from what you said earlier, it goes, it goes back to owning who you are, embracing your purpose and loving on yourself because mm-hmm. when you show up like that, people don't have the other, have no other choice but to treat you as such. And then those right. who don't, those are the ones you, you know, that, you know, you need mm-hmm. to leave them alone and, and, and let them go. Cause you, like That's you right. said, you gotta know how to weed people out. Mm-hmm. No, Girl. cause everybody got these alternative motives. I don't have time for it. Girl, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> That's a whole, a whole nother conversation. That's a whole, whole nother hour. Okay. <laughs> Let's not even go there. But thank you so much. I really appreciate having this conversation with you on today. Yes, I'm just elated. Okay, <laughs> I'm elated. But I am super excited for you and everything that thank is you. coming your way. Your podcast is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So you. I will get ready because you want to book your um your slot with mine too. So you know we got to be on each other stuff. You know for sure, that's for what sure. you're supposed to do. Yes, that's ma'am. What you're supposed to do. Yes, okay, ma'am. For sure. Yes. yes. Your From your mouth to God's ears. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know it's true. It's true. And yeah. it's you have so much, and your purpose is so big, and there's so many things that you still cannot see yet, mm-hmm. but they are coming. They are coming. Just keep just keep having faith and of course the the path to get there is, it's gonna be a couple potholes oh it's girl. gonna be some rocks you gonna trip over but that doesn't mean that you can't get back up and keep mm-hmm. going like guys you have to understand that when you fall it don't mean stay there mm-hmm. it means get back up and have that energy now two and three more times harder to get where you gotta go Mm-hmm. These obstacles we go through in life, it's just the devil just being angry because he know where we going. He know too. He he know where we going just like just like God do. Preach. Okay, so you just have to keep being inspired, keep motivating yourself, and keep pushing. And and like I said, knowing that it's right at the end of the tunnel. Like mm-mm, we all millionaires. The money just not in our account yet. Hello, I, I received that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I received. Yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Before I let you go, um, can you give us one book or audible that you recommend that has impacted your life? Ooh, it's always my favorite. Don't mm-hmm. settle for safe by Sarah Jake Roberts. <laughs> Girl, I love me some Sarah. Oh, yes. Sarah Jake that Roberts. I love her. Is so dope i've read it probably five times already like it's so good because you know like you read something and you're like was that in my head like you know what i mean or you went in church and you'd be like it's preach talking to me like you know so it's like one of those kind of books but I, I always refer the book and there's a lot of other books that i really really love um of course michelle obama book was the bomb that's <laughs> Aunt michelle that's Aunt that goes without listening. saying Okay, her book is the bomb. Um, even um Steve Harvey's Jump was a good book. That book actually initiated me to leave my corporate job. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it initiated me to leave my corporate job, and I knew that my purpose was bigger than me then. So mm-hmm. I said, if I don't do this now, I'm gonna be still talking about these shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And that's not where I wanted to be. So yeah, it actually gave me the strength to leave. That's awesome. And all three of those books, guys, are on Audible. Yes, they they're are. All, they're all on Audible too. So I I I think those are great uh recommendations because I've listened yes. to all three, all three of those, all three of those books. So those are some mm-hmm. really good books. So when describing the meaning of living your truth, what is your third word when you hear? these two words self-awareness purpose and what would be your third word self-awareness mm-hmm. purpose mm-hmm. faith Ooh, i love that. faith you got to believe in order for things to happen mm-hmm. you have to if you don't have no faith in yourself if you don't believe in god or a god like how can how can the job get done how, how really can it get done? You have to have faith. Faith has to be some 
where? What do you say? It had to be the size of a mustard seed, right? Um, y'all, like super seed. tiny, 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 tiny. You just got to have that much faith in order for things to happen. So y'all got to have y'all mustard seeds or something. Like, <laughs> for real. I love that. I love that. Faith is what's going to tie the self-awareness mm-hmm. and the purpose together. Yeah. I absolutely love that. T, we are sisters for life, my sis. Yes, we are. We can Thank you so you much. Boo. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You are so welcome. <laughs>